all plants, everybody came from the single ancestor. All of us came from the single ancestor. When the universe was formed in 13.7 billion years and Earth 4.5 billion years, probably 3 billion years before first life started and all of us came from the same ancestor. You understand this? But we say Aditi. Aditi is a woman from her, all of uh, people came. So, so her point was the sports is very important. But sports is also very important for only one point, one, one reason, which I think because most of us and Abdul Kalam is a theme here and we want to create a great nation, a superpower, a vision for our country. And by the meantime, vision and mission, whenever we go to the college, you'll find a board, the mission and the vision. But I am generally confused. What is this mission and what is vision? Can anybody enlighten me? Let us make it more a conversation now because I am not going to speak now. It's better we learn from each other because a lot of point, lot of uh, in wisdom, inspirational wisdom has come from Rohit and um, Aditi. Let us listen to their own. Time out, huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. My dear children, let me, can you... Enlighten me. Can you, can you tell me uh, what difference you find between mission and vision? Because the subject today is visioning for. Visioning for India. We are all going to have a vision. And your college has a vision. You, your, I don't know whether you have a home, vision for your home. Your father has any vision. Has he ever told you? When the teamwork was started, you know, I used to think like eight people rowing. In your house, there are four people rowing. Rowing the boat. Yes. Your father your mother, you and your brother or sister, more or less. You understand? And the problem comes because you are not a team. <laughs> you go in one direction, your father will go in some other direction. So you are also not a team. As if you are a team, you make a team. And who is going to make the team? Will your mother do it? Will your father? I tell you, you should do it. When you go today home, you tell your dad, Dad, how are you? Mom, how are you, Mom? What's going on here? Smile. I told you, you know, every father and mother want the children to be happy. Today, artificially create some happiness. Go home and say, hi, dad. He will really faint. <laughs> he will ask the, his, your, your mother, what happened to this fellow? Did you give any money today, extra, extra money today? <laughs> or did he say he is loving somebody? <laughs> what is the point? What's the matter? Whatever be the matter, say a good morning to your father and say, your mom, I tell you, you tell your mom, my dear mom, I'm very, very happy. I thank you for giving birth to me in this beautiful world. But for you, I wouldn't have studied. But for you, I wouldn't have seen Rajalashim Engineering College. But for you, I wouldn't have seen a wonder, such a wonderful function. And I'm a wonderful person. Thank you very much, my dear mom. I don't know how many of you ever thanked your mother and father for giving birth to you. If you know biology, is a very, very complicated process. The way you are born, is very complicated. The way you are born out instead of somewhere, somebody else, the possibility is 3,000 billionth of a time. Biology says during reproduction, the possibility of one sperm joining the other egg and forming you forming in that, the possibility is one divided by 3,000 billion times. When you toss a coin, what is the possibility? One by two. The, when you toss a coin, when you dropped there from your mother, the possibility was one divided by 3,000 billion. You, somebody else would have been born in your place if the other sperm would have joined with the other egg. You understand this? Therefore, you must go. I tell you, you are the cause of happiness in your house. There is no question about this. Nobody can dispute. If you are happy, your parents are happy. If you are happy, the house is happy. If there is hope in you, there is hope in the house. If you really want to test this, I will give you a small test to you if you suspect that you are the source of happiness to your mother, to your father, your home, to this college and to this nation, you are the source of happiness. If you really want to test this presumption, my idea, my psychological idea or the theorem, I will tell you today, you borrow the, one of the biggest electronics books from your library or computer science book from your library or mechanical engineering from your library, take home, oh, sorry. Technology. Technology. Okay. I'm sorry. It's my mistake. Huh? Okay. That in the, in the electronic engineering book, you go home after 5 o'clock, take a bath, sit in your table, and you study the book for the next three years. Three hours, sorry. If you don't like reading, 
you act as if you are reading very seriously. And you see the changes around you. Your mother will stop cooking. She will switch off the gas. She will come and watch. What is going on? But they are seriously studying. Then at 9 o'clock she will say, please come for dinner. No, ma'am, I don't want dinner. Another one hour I have to study. There are some very important lessons I must cover. Is it so? 10 o'clock is, oh, no, no, I am very busy. I have to study. Seriously. Either they will think something has went wrong, they must consult a psychologist. <laughs> or they will say, your mother will say, did he not tell you? After eight, 19 years, after October month only, he will get, his time will change. <laughs> the astrologer has told that. And something very important, you must immediately go to Tirupati. <laughs> so they assume this. But the point I am trying to make with this, you are the real source of the future, the visioning. So can anybody tell us what is vision and what is a mission? Vision is very important because I will tell you, she was making a nice point that sports develop your physique, sports develop your uh, character, sports develop your personality, it develops your leadership skill, so many things. But sports is also important because it's visioning for India. Sports is important because last Olympic Games, in the Olympic medal tally, the second largest country in the whole world and the first biggest democracy in the whole world, there is not one single gold medal in the medal tally of the Olympic Games, which was participated by 196 sovereign countries of the world. Very small countries like Jamaica, very, very small countries, Nigeria. They have a lot of medals. This is what 126 crores of people must think. And this is not your problem. This is not your parents' problem because this has been the problem all along. 1896 Olympic Games, we never even participated. 1900 Paris, 1904 St. Louis, America, 1908 London, 1912 Andorra, 1920 Stockholm, 1924 again Paris, 1928 Amsterdam, 1936 Berlin. Berlin. Why Berlin? Second World War. Yes, Berlin, 1936. No medal. After that, it was not held many years. 1948, London. 1956, Helsinki. 1960, Rome. Rome? 64. 64, Tokyo. 64, Tokyo. 68, Mexico City. 72, Munich. Munich is important because Israeli sports people were kidnapped and shot by Palestinian liber uh, terrorists. You know what Israeli did? Israel is called their best commander force. You know what's their order? Whoever shot our Israelis must be hunted anywhere in the world and they should be killed. This is the order. And they did. One after the other. There's a movie on this. Yes, Israelis. You must take certain characters. Yesterday there was a news report about the interview by the former president of uh, Israel. He says, his name is Simon Peri. You can, you can internet, you can, you can browse and find. He says, Israel is a country with no natural resources, no petroleum, no water. And now they are teaching us how to cultivate plants, agriculture. You must learn agriculture from Israelis. They convert their seawater into fresh water and they cultivate. The cultivation methods all over the world they are teaching. In our sense, it's also going to Israel. He says, Israel, we don't have, we don't have friends all around the country, you know, Arabian countries. We don't have friends. We completely depend upon science. Science for self-protection, science for agriculture, science for industry. Can I tell you something? The Israel, Israel had only 1,000 engineers. We have in this campus how many engineers? 6,000 engineers. They have only 1,000 engineers and they export defense products 100 times more than us. Their defense export is how many times? 100 times more than us. Anyway, so he says, the citizens, he's the he says, my dear citizens, it's, don't expect the country will bless you. <laughs> you must bless our country. You should, every one of you, you are the powerhouse. You are the future. You are the person who is going to make the difference. You must bless the country. It's not the country will bless you. That is why his message 
two days before. You know, when the Israelis were kidnapped, it was 1976 or something, 150 people were hijacked. They were kidnapped and taken into an uh, airport called Endebi in Uganda by the support of the government. And a lot of people came, their relatives, father, mother, come on, Prime Minister, what are you doing? Hmm. Why don't you go and rescue them? What are you doing here? He said, this is very sad that the Israeli people should raise for the rescue of their own children. Do you know? Every one of your children's child is a, a soldier. They are not simply captives. They are all soldiers. They know how to fight themselves. That is their mindset. Do you understand? And you know what they said? People under captives never release any terrorists for us. If they shoot us, let them shoot. We will die. Never compromise. The government should not compromise for the sake of 150 people. They said, we ourselves know how to escape, how to fight in another country. Ultimately, you know what they did? They sent their commandos, Netanyahu, a commando, a police commando went. They got on the plane, same airport. They fought with the terrorists. All the 150 people they managed, brought them into the aircraft. And the first, the last, the man who was leading the team was the last to come. When he was closing the door, again from Uganda, and shot him, and he's the only man shot dead. The leader of the commando team alone was the only man killed. All the people they brought from NDB. Where is NDB and where is Israel? That, that operation is called Operation NDB. There's a movie. What's the 60 minute something, eh? 90 minute or something. Anybody can tell the name of the movie? 90 minutes in NDB. Yes. <laughs> you must read this. The real great command action all over the world. So the point is that like him, the way he says, you know, we stopped in 1936, Berlin. 64 Tokyo. Oh, okay. 64 Tokyo, 68 Mexico City, 72 Munich. It's Munich, okay. 76 Montreal, 80 Moscow, 84 Los Angeles, 80, 88 Seattle, 92 Barcelona, 96 Atlanta, 2000 Sydney, 2004 Athens, 2008 Beijing, 2012 London. 28 Olympic Games, my dear children. India has not won any medal in the individual category except one medal, one gold medal in the individual category. Individual category, Abhinav Bindra. Abhinav Bindra is the only Indian who has won a gold medal in the Olympics in the single man category. Hockey we have been winning, yes, till 1980, yeah? 80, 80, last time. But 80, many countries did not take part. European countries did not take part in the competition. Even then, okay, we won. <laughs> Still, it's very difficult to win a model in the Olympic Games. So you must, as a community, as a country, you must know, unless you play, unless you play, who is going to win medals? Your children should play. You are very young. Your children will come. They should play. Therefore, for this reason, what Aditi said, I completely approve that sports is very important in the missioning, in the visioning for a, a great India. Okay. Now I am asking a question, my dear students. Do you think... In the next five years, you can do something which will improve the condition of our country in the next five years. Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam said in 2020, India will become a superpower. It should become a superpower. How many of you really believe that in 2020, India will become a superpower? You believe. Very good. You also believe. You're all believing. Okay. Okay, very good. How many of you, that means others do not believe? <laughs> okay. Whoever is believing, please tell me, how can India become a superpower? Let us know. <laughs> it's very important, interesting. Yeah, who, who, who said India will become a superpower in 2020? What is the way? Suppose if you tell your mother, if you tell your mother, this, this semester I will get university rank, then she will ask, how, my dear daughter? <laughs> so, far, so far, your marks are very disappointing. How will you suddenly get the university rank? Then you must tell her, you know, like this morning, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock, I will read, and after that, I... Okay. Yeah, what's your name? My name is Smriti. S Smriti? Yeah. Smriti or Surti? Smriti. What is the meaning of Smriti? Memory or remembrance. Memory, okay. That is... Vedas. Vedas are made of Smriti and Surti. Shruti. Okay. Uh, Surti is uh, memory. Smriti is memory. Surti is songs. Okay. Veda is made of songs through memory, right? Okay. That's what is uh, Veda. You know, Veda, Veda, <laughs> Veda is one of the essential concepts of Veda is that when a student uh, is... Please. 
Yeah, when a student is ready to learn, a teacher appears. When a student is ready to learn, a teacher appears. It is not like that. In the Rajalashmi College, there is a teacher, therefore a student will appear. <laughs> it's not like that. Oh, <laughs> Attendance is a condition for examination. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, many people doesn't know about the matter that... Many people do not know. Yeah, do not know about okay. the matter that okay. uh, our PM uh, Modi sir has uh, no, planned um, to implement... Uh, um, students, it's very, very important that this, since I'm a government servant and it's a recorded... Or can I switch up on the... Switch up on the... No, no, uh, sir, it's better, sir. Do not refer to any particular political no, no, party or individual. No, okay? No, no. You I, can I, say I, government... I, no, no, you can switch up the um, video. Okay. Video recording. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> But you should also become a baby. So if you become the BAW, probably India can hope to. That's why I asked you whether you have any, any particular plan. Not it, but I will. Well, okay. It's a good beginning. It's a success. It's a success. Young Indians, this, this seminar success is Smriti. He says she will have a plan for herself in the next five years to become a super student. Right. <laughs> Thank you. This also I must tell. My message, another message, uh, one, of the, one of the colleges I went, uh, a meeting like this, ultimately a girl caught up, sir, she's, she's motivated. I'm motivated. And tell me, I want to occupy the biggest post in the whole world. What is the best post? Like one is president of India. That's a post, no? Even she doesn't want that post. She wants the best post in the world. Tell me, sir, I want to achieve that post, sir. But I've seen many students. That's the only day she was taking a decision like that. The next day, I know it's the same story only. But that particular moment, she said, what is the best post in the whole world? I told the best person in the whole world is the second year student in information and technology. Student post. The post of the student in an engineering college is the best post you can aspire for. From this post, <laughs> you can get any post in the, in the world, right? New York City. New York City, one fellow asked, sir, where does this road go? <laughs> where does this road go? The other fellow told, gentlemen, this road can take you anywhere in the world. This road can go anywhere in the world. If you want to go to Paris, it will take you. If you want to Delhi, it will take you. You go to New York City airport, get into a flight, it will go to Chennai. If you want to go to Chennai, <laughs> therefore, from this college, you can go anywhere. Student post. The post of the student is a very, very responsible post. Don't think the general of the Indian Army or the police DGP or the great political leader is the leader. You are also a leader. Not a student leader. Leader student. You are a leader student. <laughs> That means you have all the responsibilities of the leaders. You may ask me, how, how do you say I am a leader, sir? I do not have 25,000 police officers under me to say I am a leader. But you have five teachers to manage, right? <laughs> Your internal assessments. You should at least correspond with five different people, with five different character. Some of them can be very, very unpleasant to you. How will you manage? Impression management, right? You must manage some impression. <laughs> Sir, you are looking very nice, sir. <laughs> sir, you are teaching very, very well, sir. The truth may not be that. But you have to say that. So the point is that you have five subjects to manage. At least five, six subjects. Are you not the manager? Are you not the leader? Okay, you will have five friends. And same five friends will become enemies next year. Or some other friends, Philip, you will become friends, and friends will become enemies. So how are you going to manage? Right? Therefore, all these skills require leadership capabilities. You don't have to have the title. You don't have the, you should, you need not have a title that I'm a school people leader, a college leader, or a club secretary. No need. The student itself is a great leadership position. <laughs> right? He's an under agent. So therefore, the point I'm trying to make is, she has a point. Who is the other person who says India will become a superpower? Please tell me how. I want to know. All of us want to know, seriously. You also said, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, students, we have learned from them. Because they are less likely to tell lies. Okay. No, no, no. You started saying something, so that's why I wanted you to. You want to say? Okay, let them say. You already. Okay, yeah. I'll be really glad, my dear students, if you have a real faith that. Hi. Hello. I'm Vigneshura from RIT Mechanical Department. Hello, Vignesh. Actually, it's about uh, foreign investors over India. Pardon? Foreign investors. Okay. Uh, we'll get new companies. Okay. So a lot of job placements in India itself. Okay. So that money will be in uh, India itself. Many, many of the engineers will not go to foreign for their work. Why? Because uh, if uh, new, new companies are over India, okay. they will prefer India itself. 
Is it because people do go abroad as they do not get any job yeah, in India? Yeah, actually, they hire our brains. No, he say, you say, yes, people will not go to abroad because jobs are available in India itself. But do you think people go abroad only because they don't get a job here? Uh, in fact, most people who left India are the people who are already employed. Yeah, but uh, they will have more... Very well placed in India only, they go. But do you think going abroad is a very, very bad idea at all? Actually, it's a bad idea. But that is a bad idea for the people who did not get a chance. Uh, no, it's about... Uh, to the development of India, we should work in India. Okay. Don't you think people go abroad, learn a lot of new technology, science, and you know, even uh, for learning, we can go abroad. Money, remit money back to Indian current Indian uh, economy. Actually, uh, you know, in Kerala, one out of forty people, one out of forty people in Kerala are abroad. They are sending money to the state. Is one of the state's greatest income is from uh, other countries. Okay. Anyway, this idea is okay. You tell me your idea. I am only trying to counter it, but your idea is well taken. Yes. So you say you mean to say that. Um, our, uh, our, our economy will flourish because of the foreign investment. Yeah. In five years, we are, we are able to stabilize. Okay, good. Nice idea. Okay, next. I appreciate Vignesh. These are ideas, huh? These are, these are ideas we need. <laughs> this, this video, can you switch it off? Because the question is video. Yeah, please. I am Srivatsan, sir. Srivatsan. 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 Yeah, yeah, Srivatsan. Sir, uh, I would not... Anyway, we are running late. I am not going to delay this further. Uh, I am going, going to request uh, the Vice Principal, Sri S.N. Murugesan, to give the concluding remarks. But before he just starts, um, from YI and CII, we would like to thank Raj Lakshmi for hosting the event. We would like to thank our speakers and we would like to inform the, the guests that after the concluding remarks, please stay back. We, on behalf of YN and Raj Lakshmi, we would like to give you a couple of gifts. Please. Very good afternoon. I think it is very difficult to speak after someone like <laughs> Dr. Sai Sailendra Babu speaks. First of all, I would like to thank CII and Young India for organizing such a meaningful function and also for choosing Rajalakshmi to host this event which enabled our students and faculty members to participate in this function of commemorating birth anniversary of our former president, late APJ Abdul Kalam. I just want to highlight two points. The first one is people traveling to different countries have mentioned in different forums that the way other countries looking at our country has changed a lot. There is a phenomenal improvement in the respect that we gain from other countries. The reason is, it is not because we are large in number. A country is given respect based on the accomplishment made in science and technology in this era. So if we take different fields in which we made remarkable progress and the first thing comes is the space. You are, you are all aware that India is launching satellites of different well-developed countries. With our own expertise, we are helping other countries to put their satellite in, in the orbit for their benefit. And it is needless to mention how important the role played by Dr. APJ in this field of space. So this man has got us a lot of respect in, from the international community and we all should thank him forever for all his contributions. The second point that I would like to mention is, I'm, I beg to differ with many of the people who's, who mentioned now and also in everyday life, we all lament 
for things which we don't get in our regular life. From the morning till night, we are lamenting. There is no discipline in the society. Corruption in the government and politician, political offices. There is no cleanliness. We are just lamenting. But one lesson that we have to learn from Dr. AVJ's life is he came from a very humble background and he came up in life and he occupies, occupied the position of President of India. Throughout his speech, throughout his writing, nowhere, nowhere you can find that he has been lamenting for what he has not got in his life. Nowhere. He never mentioned that this was not available in this country, this was not available to me in this part of the life. So that one important lesson we all should take. We should look at the opportunities that are available in front of us. We should not look at or we should not lament for something which is not available. We should not blame anybody. We should know how to make use of the opportunities that are available. To conclude, three great speakers were invited and they played their role very well. These two youngsters are really amazing. Aditi mentioned that we should know how to balance between studies and sports. These two are very important. To be a complete man, we should be healthy both in mind and in body. So we should know how to keep ourselves completely health healthy. Both our mind and body should be healthy. Then, he mentioned Rohit, Rohit mentioned about perseverance. He has not got what he, sh he should have got it to pursue his dream. But his perseverance has got him what he wanted. So we all should take one lesson from his career. Perseverance is very important. Then I don't have to emphasize whatever Dr. Sailendra Prasad has mentioned, sorry, Sailendra Babu sir has mentioned, two important points he has left for us, two important and very important points that we all should take. The first point is he emphasized is, we should empower our nation instead of expecting the nation to empower us. Shall I start? Let us recall those two points. In the in the core domain, we should develop our skills. We should be expert in the core domain. And the second point he left is honesty. That is very important for all of us. Believe me, in terms of honesty, he has left a very serious issue. I worked in a place away from our country where I had seen mobile phones, money purses left in the corridor. We can confidently leave our money purse in the corridor. Nobody will touch. There used to be at least 5,000 people crossing that place. Nobody will touch. Even pens, calculators left by a student will remain in the same place until the same student comes and picks up. It's a very important thing that we should learn. It's not only honesty in terms of 
personal belongings and also professional we should uphold professional ethics these are the two two important points he has left with us on this day we will take all these points in our mind and we uh, we will assure that that some qualities some important qualities we will instill in us so that we will remember this great person on his birthday thank you very much for your patience